tonight on Starving Secrets with Tracy Gold. Food has been my enemy for as long as I can remember. You know, food is bad, food is not good. Leonora, this relapse has been the absolute worst I've ever, ever seen. I feel like if I have food or anything in my body, it feels like I failed, like I screwed up the entire day by giving in. If I give in, I have to perch. Then I have to take more laxatives and more diuretics, and I have to get it out. She needs to wake up. Eating disorders affect 25 million Americans from every walk of life. My name is Tracy Gold. I'm one of the lucky ones. I recovered. 20 years ago, my obsession with food, my anorexia, nearly took my life. Now, my mission is to help others battle their own eating disorders. And to get them the treatment they need to save their lives. Knowing that food has taken over and controls me is awful. I, I can't make sense of it. I don't know when it happened. I don't know when I lost complete control over it. I just, I want it back. I want to be able to, to live, but you know, I don't know if I ever really have. I've come all the way to New Jersey to answer the desperate call of Leonora, a 30-year-old single mother who's been dieting herself to death. Two years ago, Leonora tipped the scale at almost 400 pounds. But now, after starving herself for 18 months, she weighs less than 100, not counting 25 pounds of excess skin. There's been many times that I've, you know, passed out cold or had a seizure. I was taken by ambulance to the emergency room. You know, the doctor told me two more minutes and I would have been dead. As soon as he left, I got my water pills out of my pocketbook and took them because the IV fluids were going into my system and I, I didn't want that weight gain. Leonora's situation could not be more critical. She has been rushed to the emergency room four times in the last six months. Because of her calorie restriction, violent purging, and excessive use of diuretics and laxatives, her doctors agree that at any moment, Leonora could drop dead. Still, she continues to restrict her food to less than 400 calories a day, less than 30% of what she needs to survive. The eating sort of voice, it's constant battle with myself to either eat or to not eat, tell me how awful I am, how much weight I need to lose. Leonora is desperate and suicidal. The only thing that keeps her alive is her beloved seven-year-old daughter, Mia. I want to help save Leonora's life so Mia won't grow up without her mother. And you've lost a tremendous yeah. amount of weight, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 300 pounds yeah. in 18 months? Since March of 09. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. I thought it would make me happy. Right. I've done it, you know, before. To this extent? Not as bad as it is now, no. When do you think this time that it felt like you started to lose control? Probably the first time that I passed out and was taken to the emergency room. From just malnutrition? Yeah, and dehydration and low potassium was always a big issue. And how do you feel physically now? I feel awful. You know, there's some days that I, don't, I just don't have the energy to even get out of bed. You know, I stand up, I get dizzy. The other day I lost balance and I fell yeah, into the Yeah, like I just, I never thought it would get to this extreme. Is this the worst it's been? Yeah, I think so. Have you always considered yourself to have an eating disorder? Mm-hmm. Food was always the thing. I was, I was hiding food. We would have frozen cheesecakes in the basement and I would, nine years old, uh -huh. eating the whole cheesecake. Leonora's eating disorder began when she was just six years old. She started binge eating in secret. She gained weight and her mom and grandmother noticed. My grandmother, when I was growing up, she was like my second mom to me. But she made it pretty clear that if I was overweight in any way, I was not good enough. You know, she would say to me, do you really want to eat that? Or what do you think you look like? What, look at what you're doing to yourself. It's such a shame you have such a pretty face and, and now look at you. 
My mom was pretty weight obsessed as well. Always had me on diets, Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem. I remember her sitting on the floor in the spare bedroom while I did the treadmill crying. I had no shoes on, my feet were hurting and had blisters and I had to just keep going. My mother and my grandparents and everybody would give me money if I lost weight or take me out or buy me something special. The more I lost weight, the happier my family was with me. At 11, Leonora began an eight-year cycle in and out of weight loss camps and eating disorder treatment centers. My weight was always up and down, always from one extreme to the other. My teenage years were pretty much spent in patient eating disorder units. Um, I was always in and out, in and out. But even after being in the treatment centers, you know, if I gained weight, we could go on a diet, we could lose weight, we could, you know, get your mouth wired shut. Oh my God, yeah. no, did, did you, did you yeah. really? Yeah. You got your mouth wired mm -hmm. shut? Because I was binging and my mom, yeah. Wow, how yeah. old are you then? I was about 17, I think, yeah. Leonora hated treatment. She rebelled constantly against the rules and authority. Just didn't stop, it was just constant binging and purging and gaining weight and yeah, binging. And overeating. Everything, and... yeah. When she was 16 years old, Leonora revealed a dark secret. For many years, she had been sexually abused by someone close to her family. This started when she was six years old, the same year her eating disorder began. Now a mother herself, Leonora worries about the effect that her food insanity is having on her seven-year-old daughter, Mia. Is she aware of what's going on? She is, I think, yeah. Well, the dramatic weight loss, she must notice she, that. She said to me actually last week, uh, you know, mommy, I've never seen you this skinny. I wanna look just like you. How did you do it? My heart stopped. As much as I think I'm hiding it from her, I realize I'm not. To leave your daughter dying of an eating disorder and you're a single mom, you're all she's got, so you've got to, I mean, that's the most motivating thing to try and get yourself mm -hmm. better. Yeah. That would be inexcusable to allow that to happen. I'm terrified for Leonora. There's no time to lose in getting her into treatment. Right now, Leonora's bizarre rituals fill her days and keep her isolated. If I eat, it will usually be fat-free, sugar-free, frozen yogurt, or turkey breast. She restricts her calories, spits out or purges the food she does eat, and checks her body relentlessly. Really depending on the day, I will take a handful of laxatives, a couple of prescription water pills that I have been told that they could kill me at any moment. Usually in the mornings, I try on about five pair of jeans. They're between, you know, two different sizes. My pants aren't fitting the way they should. <laughs> and if they don't fit, it can completely ruin my day. It dictates whether I eat or don't eat, um, or I have to purge everything or do something to make sure that they are bigger the next day. If I eat, then I, you know, I have no choice but to purge, so if they don't fit, then that, that's really not a good thing. Leonora is also taking enormous amounts of Xanax, Clonopin, and Percocet, which she believes calm her nerves and numb her out. When I look in the mirror, I hate what I see. Um, I see nothing but fat and, and, and disgusting person. There's not one good thing I could say that I see when I look in the mirror. Usually throughout the day, I feel awful. I feel sick. I don't feel well. I'm tired. I feel nauseous. I have a headache. There really is no reason as to why I, I, I do all these things. They don't make me feel good at all in any way whatsoever. Jill, what are you doing? You saw me a couple days ago, right? What was it, yesterday, the day before? Did I, did I look like I gained weight? Because my pants from July. <laughs> You know, the pants that were always big on me. I swear to God, they're not, they're, they're tighter than they were then. I don't understand it. I just, I'm tired of it all. I'm at a breaking point. Like, I just, I don't want to live like this anymore. <laughs> I 
I think if I do not stop and get help, that I most likely will end up dead from this, yeah. Leonora's daily life has become a downward spiral of pill popping, eating, and purging. But after 24 years living with her eating disorder, Leonora's family is at their wit's end, desperate for her to find help. Hi, Baba. My mom and I are very close, and she's apologized to me over and over again for everything that she did to contribute to me having an eating disorder. Good. I need salt. Kyle's getting them. Oh. I have no idea who ordered what. This is Jill. Thank you. This is Al. This is yours. This is mine and my mother's. Okay. Leonora? I don't like not having control. I, I like being able to fix everything and... You okay? But this relapse has, without a doubt, been the absolute worst I've ever, ever seen. Or do you want me to cut that in half for you? No, save it for later. Oh, you're not going to eat? Why later? I will have, have a piece of it. Of it. Oh, I appreciate it. Who's got the knife? Here. The knife? Mm -hmm. You seemed pretty cool last night about everything. You look a little zoned out. A little? I am ashamed of other people to see me eating. They're going to think, why is she eating? You know, she's too big to be eating that. Why would she be eating that? But I feel like a freak while everyone else is eating, and I'm just sitting there, you know? And I also feel like a freak if I eat. Leonor? Yes? You, you're picking at your food. You're going to eat some of it? Yes, Mom, I am. I, I, I am. It's soft. I don't like it without hot pepper. Leonor, you don't like food no matter what, so just eat it. Oh. You know what, though? I can't eat, like, with your... I asked you to talk, like, I, all the comments you want me to eat, and you keep going, though. No, I'm not gonna eat for anything scare me though. Seriously, Mom. Your brain, I don't know what the problem is. Leonora is very upset because her pants didn't fit her today. Oh, I know. Okay, are we gonna have lunch? Oh. Or what? Like, or do you want to talk about? Yeah, something else besides me, maybe. I've told Leonora I don't want to live in a world without her. And I don't. And it scares me to think about it. Maybe for a while, you and I should be inseparable morning, noon, and night. I, I don't, what, what, what are you talking about? I think that you That's shouldn't be alone point. for a while. My family means everything to me, even though I screwed it up, and I know I did. But I didn't do it intentionally, and it, I didn't do it because I don't love her. Honestly, I, I need to go smog. I really, I, I, you're, you're, I, you're, you're. Take those sunglasses off, I'll bust your face. Excuse I'm talking, me? take them off. I was going outside, that's why okay, I Okay, but I'm go talking, ahead, you're not going anywhere. Okay, go ahead, Ma. You know, I have to be honest, though. Stress and anxiety adds nothing but makes my life worse. And Me makes too. My, whatever my issues are Me worse. too. I know it's about you. Okay. That's not what I said. Oh, my God. My mom's approach and our family dynamic is to just buck up and, and get better already. I can't take it anymore. I don't want to argue anymore. I will make you healthy meals, and maybe I can What make... land are you in, though? Seriously, I'm just curious. What, what, what world? You're going to cure me? You're going to no, be the cure all No, But maybe once you start to live without these crutches... What crutches? The, not eating and all that, maybe once I you... just ate. Yeah. Oh, Leonora. That, that's all protein. That's Bambi actually... eats more than that. Okay. Okay. And it didn't... Was it made the right way? Leonora, nothing ever is. They Nothing meets your standards. Have you noticed, honey? I think the family is who the family is, and they are just a bold, in-your-face kind of kind of group. And the women in Leonora's family, they all enable each other, you know, from Graham to Leonora's mother, down to Leonora enabling Mia. You, you don't seem to get that you can't fall off the wagon because you have a seven-year-old depending on you. Leonora, it's no, not I like it. I do get that. Oh, Leonora, there's I, no falling off the wagon that's, anymore. See, the problem... Maybe that's what not everyone gets. I'm not doing it on purpose to injure my daughter. No, no, I'm not saying you're injuring your daughter. I'm saying you have a seven-year-old to worry about. Absolutely. So what if, okay, what if she was home when this happened? 
and you fell down the steps and God forbid went out cold. That would be devastating. I'm not saying I'm right in any way whatsoever. I'm saying I don't know how to stop it. You know, I feel like my family and my friends telling me, just do it, Leonor, eat it, you know, eat it, you can do it, you can do it. But they have no idea what is going through my head. They don't know how hard and terrifying it truly is. She needs to wake up. The alternative is unacceptable to me. I don't want to be Mia's mother. I don't want to raise her. And I don't want to wake up every day crying because my daughter is no longer here. So if it's all about me, so be it. And Leonora has been near death more times since January than I care to count. Absolutely. Oh, yes. And if that doesn't scare her, I don't know what will. She's, uh, she's not afraid. She's more afraid of not wearing a size zero pants. She knew she was dying once. That I is was, not I, true, I, I was Mom. Told. I, I'm I'm die and tell me you love no me. Offense, mother, she that smacked is her not true. Hell up. You think I'm not afraid? Do you honestly think that I don't know that I could die at any given moment? Do you think I don't know that? Do you think when I kiss my kid goodnight every night that I don't think I may not see her in the morning? And well, when, when, well, when is it going to be enough? When is Mia going to be enough? She is enough. And no, I think she should do something. She isn't. If, if she wasn't enough, I would have ended my life. I would not still be here. What, quicker or, or the quick way or just the way you're doing it? I would just be done. I would just be done with it. I would just I'd kill myself, to be honest. If I didn't have a child, I would no longer be living. Well, you're just weeding out the process now. Well, I, I, I said I'm doing the best I can. I, 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 I don't know what else everyone wants me to do. It's scary for them, but it's also scary for me. Um, part of me wants to say to my family, you wanted me to be thin, now you want me to gain weight after, you know, I, I've done all this. Screw you. Look, look, look now. You know, look at, look at me now. I didn't get here alone. You know, when my family and my friends are harping on me about eating, I wish they could understand what it's really like. I desperately want to be able to eat because I do get hungry. I don't want to feel like this anymore, but I can't. Like, I don't know how to do it. I've truly never had a life. Like, I don't know what it's like to be normal, what it's like to feel free. I don't know when the last time I was that I ever felt happy. I feel so defeated. I wonder if I can't get that out. What if it's too late? What if it's going on too long and that it's impossible? Despite her efforts, Leonora's attempts at hiding her eating disorder from her daughter have failed. Here you go. Okay. Got a taste? I'm just one to cheat off you. Yeah, no, no, don't you cheat, cheat it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Very good. So, why don't you eat the egg? I saw that in the cheese. What? She spit it out. No, I didn't. Oh, then what did you spit? It breaks my heart oh, so that um, my eating disorder does have an impact on my daughter. It terrifies me because I don't want her to go through what I am going through. But at the same time, I, as much as I love my daughter more than anything in this world and I would do anything for her, the one thing I can't seem to control is the food. I, I would you know, stand in front of a train for her and I can't eat or not eat for her. I'm bringing Leonora to treatment in California. She'll face an overwhelming challenge. Not only will she need to address the root causes of her eating disorder, she'll have to stop taking the unprescribed medications she uses to numb her feelings and control her weight. I never thought I'd be 30 and have a child. I'd still be living with this disease. I hate myself for being in this position for having to go into treatment. So I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna give it my best shot, and pray that my best is enough. Because my best has never, ever been enough. And no matter what I did, it was never enough. Before we left town for treatment, 
I wanted to hear firsthand from Leonora's mother, Maria, about her daughter's eating disorder. You know, Leonora has been struggling for many years, and I've seen her sick, and I've seen her what I thought was not sick, but I've never seen her this dangerously ill, and that's really what's scaring me. My ignorance is shocking to me because I didn't know there was an eating disorder problem. I just thought she liked to eat. I, I just didn't realize what it would become or what it was. The only time I can remember any of us sincerely complimenting Leonora is when she was losing weight. Do you remember that a lot? Yeah, I remember that, you know, I had to be thin to pretty much be accepted or... Be accepted, be loved. If I saw my daughter talk to my granddaughter the way I did her, I would kill her. Oh. I just want my daughter to get better. Okay. I don't care if getting better means I'm out of her life. I don't care if it means I have to move in with her. I want my daughter to get better. That's all I care about. That has to happen. I am scared. I, I don't know what tomorrow is gonna bring. And I hate not knowing. And I hate the control being taken away from me. This is so good. But I also know that I can't control it myself. I know you don't understand now, but you are the reason why mommy's going and I'm gonna get all better for you because I love you so much that I wanna be the best I can, okay? But you're already the best. Why do you have to get more of the best? I'm gonna remember my daughter's face every time I take a bite, every time I wanna run to the bathroom and purge, or every time I wanna say screw it and hop on a plane. You know I would never leave you if I didn't have to, okay? She's been through enough. I know I have to do this. I do know that. I'm just scared. I don't I don't know what to expect, and I obviously I'm a control freak. I'm, I'm giving up everything, so it's kind of hard to get a grip on that. Was last night tough? It was really tough. Really hard. I uh, ended up purging three times. <coughs> Today's gonna be tough, you know? There's no two ways about that. No. I mean, it's gonna feel uncomfortable. Um, um, I always have anxiety. Obviously, not taking any of the Percocet. You know, my normal medications, my Xanax, my Clonopin. If I don't have that, you might as well put me in the psych ward at this point, you know? Leonora's drug use is even more serious than I thought. Her substance abuse will definitely hinder all chances of a successful recovery. I, I personally don't want to be on weight gain. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't want yeah. to gain weight. What would it mean for you if you were to hold your weight where you are right now? I feel like I have more to lose. I feel like I, I you know, would like to lose another 40 to 50 pounds. Oh, so I'm not gonna know how many calories I'm eating? No. Okay, that's gonna be, be Yeah, different. that's gonna be. Okay. And so I have to eat with that enough. Knowing what I'm eating, that's difficult. There has to be discomfort in this, Leonor. No, and I know, I know gonna there's gonna be, be this. I, I'm not, gonna it's gonna, easy. I know that, Mommy. You're not listening to me. I put my Xanax and my Klonopin, and, and they don't know what to do. You don't need all that class, Mom, you have, are you kidding me? Right now, I could take a whole freaking bottle and it won't calm my anxiety. Are you out of your mind? Can I, am I allowed to like take the bread off or? No. Just kind of have to. Yeah, kind of you just kind of got to do it. I know it's going to be uncomfortable, but you know, if you can get through the first couple weeks, you know, you can do it. So you have some water here and some juice, and we'll just go ahead and start, all right? All right. All right, this is gonna be a little bit harder than I thought then, but all right. <laughs> Don't cry, honey. Nothing. Thank you. The first one's definitely the scariest. Yeah, just kind of used to my uh, my routine, so uh, mm -hmm. I guess that's why I'm here, right? It's a big challenge. 
But we try to go easy on you in the beginning. Okay. <laughs> and we try not to bite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So how was your trip out here? And your parents are watching you. Mm -hmm. okay. So basically, do you have any questions about Harmony Grove or? A whole list. <laughs> you can start asking me if you want. Okay. The medications that I'm on, I've been, I've been left up and yeah. kind of a high and dry here. Like well, I'm not okay. sure what to do. Um, Actually, you're going to be going to detox before you come in here. Okay, I wasn't informed of that. Nobody told you? No. I'm at Harmony Grove right now, and now they're telling me I can't stay here. I have to go to detox. I mean, I, I'm fine. I don't need detox. I just need Xanax. I'm freaking the out. In two seconds, I will hop a plane home, so call me back. Leonora's time at Harmony Grove is off to a disastrous start. Not only is she going to have to face her lifelong eating disorder, but she will also need to confront her prescription drug abuse in a difficult detox. I'm at Harmony Grove and they just sprung on me. Now they're sending me to detox. I don't know what to do and how to handle this. What's the handle? I thought I was here for an eating disorder. I I'm just so confused as now I'm going to a detox facility. Guess what? That's, that's part of the thing is what type of substances have you used recently? Percocet. Um, Percocet? From Friday to Sunday. And what is the purpose of the Percocet? Yeah, just an escape. You know, an escape from myself, from the eating, from everything. But I do know that there's no excuse for taking it. How much were you taking? I, I you know, I cut back a lot, maybe about four a day. Um, and then from Friday to Sunday, I went a little overboard and took almost 80. How about benzodiazepines, Xanax, Klonopin? Yeah, I should take Xanax and Klonopin. And how much Xanax do you take a day? About three to four milligrams of that. So what we can do here is make sure that your detox is comfortable. I just feel like, honestly, everyone is overreacting and it's overwhelming me. Not that I don't abuse pain medication. Yeah. Um, you know, I admit that, but I also know my limits. I also know how much to take and when to stop, when I'm getting carried away. Carried away meaning 80 and 72 hours? Yeah, that was that was craziness. That was me knowing that I was coming to an eating disorder unit. Okay. You know, that was me kind of freaking out and just really having a bad weekend and eh, my last hurrah, whatever. But you remember, Mom, I was saying, and I, I know you don't like to hear this, but I was abusing Percocet to the extreme. So I'm going to be talking about I know you don't, I don't care. care. I know you don't care. I know you don't, Mom, but that's not the point. I, I, I don't you know are, what to do. You, you, can't, you can't come home. There's nothing to do. All right. Are you going to spend the first week of therapy having tantrum playing on it? I'm not having a tantrum, Mom. I'm upset. I'm scared. Okay, if that's what you want to call a tantrum, call it a tantrum. I'm just, I'm upset, okay? I think anybody in this situation would be upset and scared. I don't know what, what what's coming next. I have no idea. Oh, that's okay. It's not okay. You need, like, my laxatives and... Yeah, he wants to see it all. See he just I'll wants see it all. to be careful before he left. Being someone telling me you have to go to detox, you have to go into a drug rehab facility was not something I would ever expect to hear. So it was like a shock, a blow to my ego. It was a reality shock, I think. You know, I've read through everything and I've looked and I, I, I pretty much have a good idea where you're at, but there are legal issues, mm -hmm. medical legal issues. It's just about us knowing what you're taking. No, and I understand that. And that's what it should be, that's safety. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, no. you can't go to Harmony Grove until you... Until so I'm admitted here? until you admitted here or somewhere else. All right, well, this isn't gonna work then, because I'm not and they, and they want it for two weeks. Okay, yeah, no. Definitely not gonna happen, no. I don't want to go to detox because I don't feel I need, I need it. I feel like I'm fine, I can handle it myself. So my thing is either, you know, I, I, I go to a hotel and either go to Harmony Grove tomorrow, or I, I don't know what to do because I'm not willing. I, I could I, probably I go home. That's, that's, that may be an option right now. I'm offering to make sure you're stable, make sure you get a good night's sleep, you're gonna feel better. I'll make sure that you don't have any swings off drugs, 
and then once that but my that's thing, obvious, you just go over there. My thing they is that I've been they off can't medication see. for four days now. So what am I stabilizing from? That that's my that's my. We question. have no evidence of that. I know you're taking handfuls of drugs. No, I'm not taking handfuls of Xanax or Klonopin at all. We that's what the evidence supports. The diuretics, you can see that I abused beyond, you know, beyond, um, but, and, and the Percocet, obviously I've abused, but other than that, I, I'm not agreeing with this whole thing, no. But the bottles don't make any sense. You're not taking what it says on the label. Nobody knows what you're taking. The only thing I want to do is go home, but it's hard and scary to think that I'm going to have to face everyone, my family and my friends, and that they most likely will be done with me if I don't follow through with what I said I was going to do. Your eating disorder is primary, but drugs are a long-term issue, and they go together. You have both. And so if you don't deal with one, you can't fix the other. And I know you're upset thinking you weren't going to have to deal with that. And uh, I don't want me and my daughter to ever think that her mommy was a drug addict. This is all about your issues of control then. So I stay here tonight, and I can check out tomorrow. Yeah. If I'm okay. If you're, if you're stable, and if I just I'm have... okay in my mind. If I'm okay as I am right if now. If you're okay in my mind. Harmony Grove is not equipped to deal with the withdrawal from the amount of prescriptions that you're on. Dr. Rand believes that it's going to take around 30 days to get you stable off those. You know, you knew I was on Xanax and Clonopin. You could have said to me, you know, Leonore, I don't want you here on Xanax. Let's work it out later. We have clients on Xanax and Clonopin. However, when, you, when I heard about the bottle of the 80, that's the Percocet. The Percocet. And to me, that was really it's scary. It's insane. I admit that. It, it, it was really scary. scary. This is a, an amazing opportunity for it you to do. It was an amazing opportunity. But you're turning it around to go 30 days detox, which I do not need. And then we'll, maybe But we'll we've decided as a team that that's what you need. OK, well, Leonora decided as a person and a human being that that is insane. That's insanity. Now I'm gonna do 30 days of detox? No, I, I will just, I could do detox at home, so I'm done. We've decided as a team that's what you need. Okay, well, Leonora decided as a person and a human being that that is insane. Now I'm gonna do 30 days of detox? No, I, I will just, I could do detox at home, so I'm done. After I got angry and flipped out, I, um, thought to myself, I can either stay or I can go home and tell my daughter that I gave up. And I just, I can't imagine telling my daughter that mommy's not doing what I promised. I promised her I was going to get better. So I want you to take about five minutes to write down all the things that go through your head on a daily basis about what you hate about yourself, what you don't like, any kind of negative body image issues. 17 days into detox, Leonora has started outpatient treatment at Harmony Grove. She's beginning to confront the toxic emotions at the root of her eating disorder. Today has been a very challenging day. I uh, had a lot of urges to purge today, a lot of anxiety. Um, my family's coming tomorrow, so I'm excited about that, but I think a little nervous, too. I'm scared. You know, it's, it's finding out who we are. I think that's what I'm scared of, because I have no idea who I am. I'm trying really hard to figure that out, but I don't have a clue. Who wants to light the fire? I do. Yay. All right, so everybody, let's say a cheer to getting rid of self-hate. Hey. If Leonora is going to recover, she will have to confront her issues with her family. You're picking at your food. You're going to eat some of it? Stress and anxiety makes my life worse. Me too. It makes whatever my issues are Me worse. Me too. I know it's about you. She needs to wake up. Leonora's mom and dad have come from New Jersey for three days of intensive family therapy. Leonora was born four weeks before I turned 19. She was my practice kid. You know, I was a child raising a child. How much older was your mother? About 40 years, something like that. So she raised the two of you at that point. Oh, yeah. 
So she's the one who programmed a lot of that about her eating and, and things. I would oh, think. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a weight problem yourself? Sure. I would leave dressing rooms sobbing. At what age did that occur? Oh, any age. You're always, the last you're time I cried in a dressing room. As a teenager? No, I wasn't because I would not eat. I would go. My mother had, I can't believe I'm even saying this, but my mother made a deal with me. If you don't eat all day, I'll treat you to a McDonald's filet fish sandwich for dinner. So I would go all day and not eat, and that would be my meal. And so that's how I maintained my weight. She practiced some form of anorexia. Oh, I, I don't think it was anorexia because I was never afraid to eat. But I mean, yeah, that's a form a, that's, of an eating disorder. I have that's to a form tell you, I didn't even disorder. know that. Yeah, it's sick. It, it is sick. I knew she was obsessed with her weight and food, but I didn't know she starved all day. Did your mother have a weight problem? She didn't have a weight problem because she controlled it. How did she control it? Still, till this day. How? She just restricts and she'll tell me what she ate or what she did. Any... She talks about it. Oh, you have no idea. Did that come from your dad? No, that came from her mother. My grandmother was very appearance conscious. Very. I think they're all sick. I really do. I think they're all just screwed up and sick and dysfunctional. I mean, that's like as honest as I can be. I don't disagree. I think it's just very sad that my grandmother grew up like that and you grew up like that and to be honest with that, I grew up like that. I'm considering maybe relocating with my daughter to San Diego. Be a whole new start, a whole new fresh start for me and I just have never experienced being completely on my own away from my entire family and everything I know. And to be honest with you, I've never really been an adult. What type of boundaries would you like to establish? What is when it comes to food, when, and when it comes to enough. food to support your recovery. Let's not look at me. Let's not comment on, on my weight or my size that day. I agree. I, I don't want to hear who's exercising five hours a day, who's on a diet. That that triggers me. But see, Leonora, you need to stand up for yourself. No, but it, it is. it hurts my feelings when people tell me you need to go to the gym or eat this. Or I eat hear that. you. Like, I hear you. Are you kidding me? Here. You have to stand up I'll for yourself. You, let's slow down. I'll you give you two easy support. words to reply. Piss off. There you go. Yeah, but they're also family. They're also friends. Tell them to piss off. But it's hard for if me. If there are any that. real friends or if there are any real family, they'll shut up you know, and change the subject. Oh, yeah. What are you feeling right now? Pissed off because I just can't believe this is an issue. Tell them to go f off. I didn't know I was going to be this hard, and I didn't realize how many things I have to face. I have just constant anxiety, and I felt angry at my mom and resentment, and I don't have any answers for anything right now. What do you need to hear from her? What do you need to hear from her? That it's okay. What's okay? That I thought I have to gain weight. Of course it's okay. But you have to remember that it wasn't always okay with you. I That's know that. Why it's so hard oh, for no, me. Oh no, I, Leonora, no one knows that better than me. You need to find the strength to know in your heart that we were all screwed up. You did nothing wrong and that you are worthy of eating a meal and you are worthy of raising your child and you are worthy of laughing again and having fun and maybe meeting someone to build a life with. You are worthy of all that. So it goes back to what you'll be learning to do here is um, come to grow into who you are and more and more. And soon, I don't think it will matter and that what you're gonna be able to do is find your voice more and more and say what you need to say either through a letter or... That's what I mean when I say buck up. Which is so obnoxious. <gasps> oh, I can't believe it came out. That's <laughs> great. Doesn't she though? That is the most... That is the no, most... but that really is... I, I never knew how that. to put it in words. I don't appreciate hearing that. I think it's so obnoxious. Buck up. Like, I really do find that to be offensive. Buck up? You go buck up. Because it's not that easy just to buck the hell up. It's like a light just went off. I want you to find your voice. Oh, I'll find my voice. Good! I think Can you I? just started to. And you're angry. Because I hate that saying. It belittles no. my problems. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I don't know anybody that just can buck the hell up. But you had to get it in there again today. Buck up. I didn't tell you just now to buck up. Let's be clear. Yeah, I think it is. No. What I just said was, that's what I've been trying to say all these years. Okay, well, I'll find my voice in a calm way, right. maybe. So, no, not maybe. You have to. So you don't have a choice, you have a kid. You have to find your voice and you have to let the world know you've arrived. And that's the end of that story. Are you feeling better physically? 
I do. It's so weird for like the first time a few days ago I said, I feel okay. Like it's, I'm just not used to feeling okay. Yeah, I mean, you you were like, when I met you, it was just so yeah. depleting. I know it's very easy to go back. You know, I have one foot in life right now and one foot in darkness. And I can go either way. Did they take you off the Xanax and Klonopin everything. also? They took also you off everything. everything. Good, yeah. yeah. I think the foot that's in life is a little bit more grounded. Do you still feel like you're a flight risk? Like I'm gonna leave? Yeah. No, I can't tell my daughter I gave up. And you know, I realized that it really came down to life and death, it, that how mm -hmm. close I truly was. And uh, I can't go back. Everyone's telling me all this stuff I have to face. I'm just like, okay, a little overwhelming, but mm -hmm. I'll face it, I'll do it. I have hope. You know, Tracy Gold has given me hope when I didn't have any. Once you're done with detox, you'll move into the Harmony Grove. Harmony Grove, yeah. House. Because it's really scary to think about what could have happened if I was not given this gift. If I was not given this opportunity, I probably would be dead. The cycle breaks here. Yeah. The cycle stops here. Yes, it has to. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. I know. This is going to be good. This is the beginning of the end of the torture you've put your body through.